Welcome to this uh, lecture of the course Computational Hydraulics. Uh, we are in module 6, interaction of different types of flow and this is unit number 1. Uh, surface water and ground water interaction. In this particular module, I uh, will be talking about uh, interaction of different kinds of flow and specifically uh, this module has got only one unit and this is surface water and ground water interaction. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I will uh, loosely talk about the pipe flow and during this interaction. Uh, learning objective, uh, at the end of this unit, students will be able to solve uh, unsteady interaction problem between channel flow, uh, surface flow and groundwater flow. So this is our general structure of the course. Uh, for a particular problem, we need to uh, identify uh, the problem definition uh, which is for the hydraulic system. Then we need to uh, mathematically conceptualize the problem in terms of governing equation, initial condition and boundary conditions. Uh, after that, uh, we need to discretize the domain. Uh, either with structured, unstructured grid or point uh, method that is uh, a mesh free approach. And uh, finally, uh, we need to discretize the governing equations and uh, we need the algebraic form of the governing equation. So governing equations uh, or a discretized form of the governing equation. Uh, these may be uh, linear or nonlinear in nature and depending on that uh, we need to uh, apply different solvers. For linear problems we have direct or iterative math uh, approaches and for nonlinear uh, method we have only iterative approach available. But in this case, uh, for interaction, we have three components. One is surface water, next one is ground water. Now, in this surface water and ground water can be uh, conceptualized or mathematically conceptualized in terms of single governing equation. But uh, whatever we have discussed in this course, in that one uh, we have talked about one dimensional channel flow, two dimensional surface flow and two dimensional groundwater flow. So uh, let us integrate this one dimensional channel flow, two dimensional surface flow and a two dimensional ground water flow uh, for this problem. Now let us define the problem, uh, what is the problem statement? Problem statement is, uh, let us say uh, this is the area which is a particular command area or irrigation command area and we need to supply water for this irrigation command uh, through 1D uh, channel network. This is our channel network and within this channel network uh, there are number of uh, branches available. And uh, we have this uh, blue ones, these are outlet points. Through these outlet points, uh, the water is supplied to the field. Now uh, for a particular irrigation system, water is applied at the head 
or a head of the uh, channel reef and this water may be sufficient or uh, in some cases it may not be sufficient uh, for the irrigation command, then we need to pump out uh, water from the ground, uh, ground water system. So, these three are, so these three are pumping wells and uh, finally, when we will be applying water to the field through this outlets, obviously water will travel uh, in the field and um, there will be surface water flow in the field itself and that is two dimensional in nature uh, as per our conceptualization. Now, uh, we have three components, uh, one is unsteady channel flow, in unsteady channel flow uh, we need to find out what is QC and YC. QC is a function of X and T, YC is also function of X and T. What is QC? QC is the discharge in the channel and YC is the flow depth in the channel. Now, in this case, uh, after uh, the, this outflow from the channel network, water will travel to the uh, field uh, and there will be two dimensional surface flow. So, if we want to model that surface flooding or surface flow component, uh, it should be modeled through uh, this shallow water flow equation. In shallow water flow equation H s which is a function of x, y and t that is the uh, total uh, flow depth there in the uh, field. Then we have u s and v s these are also functions of x, y and t. Now, third component uh, which is required for this system is unsteady unconfined uh, aquifer flow because uh, your first layer or unconfined layer is connected uh, directly uh, with the surface through unsaturated zone there will be one saturated zone and unsaturated zone in the system. So, if this is our ground surface and in the bottom we have water table at this level. So, for this system we will have surface water flow in this case this is our H s. Now, this H s is there and obviously, there will be infiltration through this uh, zone uh, which is the ground surface or G s and it will travel through this unsaturated zone, unsaturated zone and in the bottom we have saturated flow condition. This saturated flow condition is there uh, for unconfined aquifer system. Unconfined aquifer system. For unconfined aquifer system, we do not have any confining layer uh, on top. So, it is directly connected to atmosphere and unconfined aquifer system is also called as phreatic aquifer 
or water table aquifer phreatic aquifer or water table aquifer now uh, in this case uh, we have surface flow which is or this is SF or surface flow and below this uh, water table we have GF or ground water flow which is for unconfined aquifer system. Now there will be recharge through this unsaturated zone towards this ground water table and after getting this recharge obviously uh, we can solve this ground water equation. So, for ground water uh, problem which is unsteady unconfined aquifer flow we need to find out Hg or what is the hydraulic head with respect to datum. Now, we can divide it into three components. First one is channel flow. So, we have uh, these are external junctions, external junction points. At the same time, uh, if you have uh, these points, these are also outlet uh, points or outflow points in between and others are uh, internal junction points. So, uh, we need a certain number of equations. Let us say in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 6, 7, 8, this is 9, this one is 10, on this side we have 11, this is uh, let us say this is 12, this is 13. 13, this is 14, this is 15, 16 and 17 uh, channel reaches in this case and we have one inflow condition. So, for 17 channel reaches uh, we have uh, all total uh, if you divide this one into number of reaches. So, 17 for 17 if you have summation, summation i equals to 1 to 17 n 1 or n i plus 1 this is the total number of uh, sections for uh, ith reach and if we sum it up obviously we will get the total number of sections we should multiply it with 2 that will give us the total number of unknowns because at each section we need to find out what is qc and yc for this system and qc and yc these two values are uh, functions of x and t, this is also functions of x and t. Obviously, uh, this is a one unsteady channel network problem uh, depending on the upstream flow condition or upstream inflow condition there will be changes in the uh, flow pattern and discharge within the channel network. 
obviously these outlet points uh, these points may be uh, through direct pipe flow or through some hydraulic structure. So, we need to incorporate the effect of hydraulic structures within this system, but obviously in simplified form we will get uh, junction conditions in terms of discharge or flow depth uh, that is energy condition and we can solve the problem using our channel network uh, flow equation and we can utilize our generalized uh, reverse uh, code with reverse flow situation for this one and uh, this is one unsteady problem. Now, next one is our uh, conceptualization in terms of governing equation. So, in this case in continuity uh, as per our previous uh, consideration we have del A by del T and uh, del C by del X, uh, this is del C by del X. So, in this case uh, one thing is important uh, that is A is function of Y C and Q is one variable here and this minus q c this is important minus q c means that uh, I am allowing outflow from the channel network that is there will be outflow from the channel network. So, minus q c is the outflow component next is momentum equation this is the same equation that we have utilized for our unsteady channel network problem and uh, these notations are standard ones y c is the depth of flow s f is the friction slope uh, this is n square q square r to the power 4 by 3 a square a is again cross sectional area as I have told this is uh, a function of y c uh, q c uh, is the lateral outflow amount negative sign is there uh, to uh, consider the outflow condition and h is water surface elevation which is y c plus z for any section alpha is the momentum correction factor uh, q c is the discharge uh, g is acceleration due to gravity and z is the elevation um, of the channel bottom with respect to datum. Now, we need to consider this component and we need to link this component with the surface water flow because if there is lateral uh, outflow from the channel obviously, the contribution will be towards surface water flow situation which is two dimensional flow. Now, in unsteady uh, free surface flow condition which is shallow water flow condition these are uh, inflow points or we have information about discharge values at these points or inflow values at this points for the surface water system with this we can uh, start our uh, unsteady problem and we can solve it with uh, definite boundary conditions. Obviously, we need uh, boundary conditions for this command area because we have considered this rectangular system as irrigation command. Now, next problem is uh, definition uh, of the governing equation in vector form you can write del u by del t, del uh, e by del x, del g by del y equals to s and this is h s, u s, v s these are uh, water height uh, this 
uh, depth of velocity at x and y directions and this component is important because we need to find out the linkage between channel flow and surface water flow. What is the linkage? Linkage is here. If I have a rainfall component R is rainfall and plus QC which is QC is the channel uh, outflow. So, this contribution is coming from channel R is rainfall which is occurring in the area. So, R plus QC minus QS. What is this QS? QS is the infiltration component. So, we can uh, deduct uh, this amount to get the uh, maximum or uh, the total inflow to the system. This is inflow minus outflow. So, effective inflow to the system is R plus QC minus QS. Now, we need to uh, link uh, these parameters, these parameters out of these parameters uh, rainfall we cannot directly link with groundwater flow system. Uh, we need another component because if uh, there is rainfall in a particular area, so total amount uh, will not get recharged into the system. A partial or a fraction of that uh, will be uh, there for infiltration. So, let us say that QS is that amount. Now, we need to link this QS uh, with our groundwater equation. So, this is our unconfined uh, unsteady aquifer flows model where we have three pumping wells 1, 2 and 3 and in this case we need to find out what is A g which is again function of x, y and t and uh, we should remember that at every cell because I have discretized it into number of cells. So, at every cell we will have information about q s. QS is the component which is coming from our uh, or which is linking the surface water and ground water. So, QS is the amount uh, which is coming out from the surface water system and it is getting recharged into the uh, saturated ground water flow uh, as a saturated ground water flow component. So, obviously, uh, in this case uh, we are considering uh, that whatever amount is getting recharged into the system uh, that is uh, directly added or that is directly added to the ground water system. There is no loss in unsaturated zone. So, in this case, uh, we can utilize our usual uh, governing equation for solution. So, what is that governing equation? Now, uh, I have modified this equation because uh, we need to consider the bed elevation of the aquifer. This bed elevation component, this is again function of x and y. Uh, so, we are considering bed elevation with respect to a particular datum. So, if I consider that this is my datum d datum and this is the ground water table and this is my base of the aquifer, then we have this as ground surface or G s. 
So, for this problem we have a particular section, let us consider this section there. At this section we have this zeta at this point or uh, this psi in this case. This is uh, the elevation of the aquifer with respect to datum and this is the total height of ground water. This is x, y and t. So, in this case uh, we need to deduct this amount. Uh, for consideration of flow and other three components we have minus p plus i and plus q s. Plus q s is the infiltration component which is coming from the surface water system. This component can be calculated uh, using uh, our standard of one dimensional uh, conceptual models or analytical models like Grinamt model and this minus WP is the pumping rate because we have three pumping wells in the system. So, we need to consider this component and there can be injection wells in the system where we can inject water into the aquifer. So, considering these three components minus pumping plus injection and plus q s, q s is the infiltration infiltrated uh, water uh, from um, our surface water system uh, that is getting added to the unconfined aquifer system. So, obviously, uh, in this case uh, uh, we are considering these three components channel flow, surface flow and ground water flow. Let us see how uh, these components are interacting with each other. Now, uh, this is canal surface water ground water interaction case. Now, we have channel network let us say this is our one particular section this was our rectangular domain for the command area and within that let us say this is our channel system and if I take one section there let us say this is my section A a prime if I take that section I should get this view I should get this view and in that section I have this canal flow on top because canal is always at a higher elevation compared to uh, usual ground surface this is our ground surface on both sides and we have outflow component which is coming out from the canal system which is QC and this outflow is through pipe. So, we have linked canal flow with pipe flow. Now, if the water level is above this uh, pipe inlet obviously, there will be flow from left to right. If this water level is below this uh, out uh, below the uh, lower elevation of the outlet pipe then there will be no flow from left to right that is q c then q c will be 0. Now, in this case in this case 
uh, we are considering this canal flow through this outlet. Uh, there may be situations where we have a flood situation in the right hand side, then if we have surface flooding which is above this outlet, but it is below this embankment height, obviously there will be flow from right to leftwards if there is difference in elevation. So, uh, we can see that this Q c is not fixed amount, uh, it will vary depending on the condition in the uh, 2D system or 2D surface flooding uh, system and uh, 1D canal flow system. Uh, obviously, in this case uh, we are considering that channel uh, or uh, channel or canal is line 1. So, there is no uh, outflow or infiltration from the channel bottom or canal system uh, only through outflow we have uh, this uh, uh, component Q c is coming out from the system. Now, after we have got this Q c amount from our channel network, we can uh, find out what will be the surface flooding situation in the two dimensional system. So, this will be the uh, surface flooding situation. Obviously, uh, as we are considering canal flow is one dimensional or channel flow as one dimensional, we are not considering any rainfall uh, recharge on top of the canal, only uh, we will be considering this rainfall uh, in the 2D surface flooding system. So, obviously, if there is outflow from the canal, there will be a rise in the water table uh, or uh, free surface. Uh, free surface in the surface flooding situation. So, this is a free surface there. So, recharge we have we have recharge component or rainfall here and Q s is the infiltration component and Q c is inflow. So, that is why R plus Q c minus Q s is uh, the net inflow to the system. Now, in this case uh, we are considering we are considering this uh, surface water system and when we have considered our canal flow still there will be ground water flow, um, but without recharge from the surface water system. But when uh, we have this recharge component available Q s, so we need to add this to our ground water system or which is the unconfined aquifer. In that case there will be rise in the water table due to this recharge. Below this canal I have not considered uh, this recharge uh, because this is line 1 uh, that is by conceptualization of this problem. So, in this case uh, we need to uh, define our values. So, what are the values for uh, our canal flow H which is water surface elevation. H is nothing but H is nothing but Y c plus Z. So, I have not shown this Z, but uh, I have showed this Y c 
and h obviously z will be h minus y c in this case. This h s uh, h s is the surface water flow depth z b is the bottom elevation of the ground surface h g h g is the uh, elevation of the ground water uh, surface or phreatic water table and in this case this is the elevation of the aquifer bottom. So, these are the different components uh, that we need to consider the in the integrated system obviously, in this case we have linked few things uh, or few components one is ground water flow uh, from the backward direction uh, ground water flow then we have surface water flow, we have pipe flow, we have channel flow. In our module 3 uh, we have discussed module 3 we have discussed our uh, discretization of the ground water flow equations. In module 4 I have discussed this canal flow or channel network flow problem. Uh, module 5 uh, uh, module uh, this one is module 3, module 4, module 5 is our uh, ground surface uh, or uh, uh, module this is this also comes under module 4 uh, this is the last unit or unit 8 and this module 5 is our pipe network flow. So, we can integrate the discretization of uh, different components from different modules and we can solve one integrated problem using our uh, uh, available governing equations. Now, in this case uh, we have linked this problem of 1D channel flow, pipe flow, our surface flooding and ground water flow component using recharge or uh, discharge values that is infiltration or outflow from the system or or infiltration uh, to the system, but uh, there is another way uh, of linking the surface water and ground water flow. In this case canal is at higher elevation, but if we consider river flow situation in that case river will be at a lower elevation river bed. Now, this is our uh, regional ground water level. Uh, in that case this unconfined ground water table elevation should coincide with the water level or uh, stage in the river. So, uh, we can solve this integrated surface uh, ground water and river flow situation using our governing equations. But still uh, in this case there can be surface flow, uh, this surface flow uh, may be due to uh, rainfall, this surface, surface flow may be due to rainfall, uh, this Q s uh, is the infiltration which is coming out uh, from the surface water system. Obviously, uh, if uh, we have water level, water level at a higher elevation in the ground water system, then there will be flow of water 
from ground water system towards the river. And the situation is called as gaining stream situation, gaining stream situation and if we have a losing stream situation where our water level is like this. So, this is the water surface elevation uh, for our ground water system. Obviously, there will be flow from our river system towards the ground water. So, this is the losing stream situation. So, we can model the interaction between ground water and surface water. In previous case, in the canal flow situation, there will be interaction between the surface flooding situation and canal flow. Uh, still, uh, if we have water logging situation in the system, then also uh, there will be interaction between ground water and surface water. But in this case, this ground water system is directly linked with the river flow situation uh, and uh, surface water is linked through this QS. Obviously, if there is rise in the water table, uh, rise in the water table up to ground surface, there will be interaction between surface flow and ground water flow. So, uh, what is the algorithm structure uh, data? Uh, let us say uh, this is uh, the information available at nth time level. So, these are the values uh, which are available at the nth time level and what is our objective? Objective is to find out the value for updated QC or x t n plus 1. That means, at future time level, what will be the value? Now, what should be the structure? Structure is a forward structure for the problem, solve channel flow with uh, delta t c, then uh, calculate q c, then solve surface water flow uh, with delta t s then calculate uh, Q, QS because uh, we need to use this QS for both uh, surface flow and uh, ground water flow. So, this solve ground water flow system with delta T g. So, in this case Q is required for both. So, we need to calculate it first here. And then we need to solve surface water flow and ground water flow system. So, finally, we need to solve this ground water system with delta T g and n we should update to get the uh, old time level value because now future time level value is old time level value or uh, available value for the next time step. Now, in this case, uh, these three things are important delta T c, delta T s, delta T g. Let us say that we are utilizing uh, explicit uh, formulation for our problem. Obviously, uh, depending on this uh, requirement for different conditions like CFL condition or other condition, we need to restrict the delta T value. Obviously, for surface water ground water interaction problem, we have this uh, usual condition. That means, delta T c should be greater uh, less than delta T s less than delta T g why uh, this is happening? Because 
the ground water flow is a slow process and it is a slow system. Then comes this delta T s or 2 D surface flooding situation and finally, 1 D channel flow. Obviously, this channel flow is much faster compared to our uh, surface flooding situation. So, this condition will be there. So, for a particular time step uh, uh, this T g is more and T c uh, is less obviously for a particular time, time period or del T g we need to uh, iterate our surface flow situation uh, number of times. Again for a particular delta S or surface flow situation we need to iterate this del T c number of times so that we can match the values or transfer the values at the end of any time period. So, this is the overall structure of the algorithm. Uh, we can utilize uh, these information from different uh, modules and we can integrate uh, these uh, discretization uh, to solve uh, one integrated problem. Now, this is one example which is much more generalized one. Let us say that we have a reservoir inflow system. This is one reservoir there. This is another reservoir system on this side and we have these command area systems available here. So, flow is coming from there. This is 1 D flow to the system. Again uh, when uh, water will be transferred to the command area. So, this is 2 D flow. Again at this point it is 1 D and it is coming, uh, coming to the downstream uh, 2 D uh, flooding area or area of our concern. Because if we discretize the total domain the computational effort will be much more. So, we can conceptualize different components of the system uh, in terms of uh, 1D and 2D uh, systems and we can integrate those systems to solve a, uh, a particular integrated problem and this is discretization uh, of the computational domain. Obviously, we have only talked about the discretization in terms of rectangular uh, gridding system which is uh, according to the Cartesian coordinate system. But still with the Cartesian coordinate system itself we can use triangular mesh or quadrilateral mesh to divide the same domain into number of uh, elements. So, what is the advantage of that? Advantage is that uh, we can easily track the irregular boundaries. Near irregular boundaries uh, this discretization is much better compared to our conventional rectangular gridding system. If this is our boundary, let us say this is our boundary for same boundary if I want to utilize rectangular gridding system then I need to include certain number of cells and I need to omit certain number of cells. So, we cannot exactly track the boundary using 
uh, or irregular boundary using uh, our usual the rectangular grading system obviously in that case we need to uh, use this triangular meshes. So, this is the overall idea about the integrated solution of the problem considering different components it can be channel flow, it can be surface water flow, it can be ground water flow. Now, we can integrate all components and we can solve this system uh, using this integrated approach. Thank you.